One. All right, we're here at the Del Market house. We got Miko in the house. How you doing? Hello, world. We got Christy in the house. That's me. Byron. What up, what up? And I'm very happy to welcome Patricia Butler and Clinton Butler. How you doing? For oh, coffee? Yeah? Sh- I can't even pronounce coffee the word. Coffee Coffee Shinado. Nice, nice. <laughs> so, I, I won't jump right, right into it. You know, I'm always... I'm personally not a big coffee person, but I, I'm always curious about this, this kind of subcultures, like people drink coffee, they have their own language, their own code, their own, uh, and people drink wine, beer, but coffee is a whole different thing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how this thing got started and uh, what... Well, it um, started very innocently. We didn't know that we were going to be where we are right now. Originally, we were the investors. We had, we had been asked to be the investors on a new venture for Cold Brew about four years ago. Mm-hmm. And, we, um, and because I had connections in Colombia with coffee, I, uh, thank you for specifying I, that. It was with coffee. Thank you for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of connections. We're all talking about connections. We are talking about coffee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Air quotes. And, yes. And so uh, we were asked to be investors, and because I had connections in Colombia, that just, you know, my family and cousins and friends, they had farms in Colombia. I knew that I could get into the business, not just making uh, money on the investment, but also making money, money uh, providing the coffee. So I was very excited to be able to do that. I thought it was easy. Um, we had the, we had, and they, you know, the idea of making a new product, cold brew, was so exciting because four years ago, cold brew was brand new. Mm-hmm. Not really, not everybody was doing it. I mean, actually, actually not even everybody knew about it. So um, I sold the idea to my husband. Uh, you sold it to him? Yes. Still it sounds getting, like there's more getting, to that. Getting sold every day. Um, I, yeah, so she, she became a coffee importer and... We bought four or two metric tons, which is 4,400 pounds of coffee. Uh-huh. And when is this, by the way? What year? This are we is at? in 2015. Got it. And oh, okay. so, so right when the coffee the coffee gets delivered to us at our house, and we got to move our cards out of our garage and store this, you know, sacks and sacks of coffee in our garage. And right when, like two or three days before we were going to deliver the coffee, like we had lined up the logistics, we were going to deliver it to the company. The whole deal went south, and the invest the company we ended up investing in was run by two guys that we had no business investing in. No, they not had at all. liquidated the company basically, and we found oh, out. Yes, yeah. Shit. yeah. Yes. So we found out about that fucking shit. Oh my god. And, uh, <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah. So we're like, yeah. what? Uh, so you guys, all the money. And it was uh, uh, like honestly, it was because we got I, we got a phone call from the bank letting us know that all these transactions were being placed on our on our credit card, and we're like, what? So he thinks that I'm doing it. <laughs> of course he is. So, of course he is. So he he's like, like why are we buying a drone? Ex- he oh, thinks well, that I'm doing yeah. it, and I don't even and I don't know what's going on, and so I I feel the tension fr- that is building between us, <laughs> and I'm also putting pressure on these guys like. When are we gonna have production? Well, we found that we find out that they, at the end of the day, they ended up embezzling us over a hundred thousand oh dollars. Goodness. Damn. May, may ask? Well, yes. The I'm amount sorry. is still in question, yes. but it was a, it was a it was a shitload of money. Yeah. So obviously, this was quite a bit to happen to yeah. your family. And I know you have two young, beautiful little girls. Yeah. You know, was it hard? Did they really understand? Like, oh, how yeah. did that affect the family? Oh, I mean, you know, how does dropping a nuclear bomb in the middle of a city affect the town. Were you know? guys I mean, here it's just, Yes, this happened yeah. in San Antonio, and I had just started interacting with the people from San Antonio because, as you can tell, I have an accent, and so I am not from here. Mm-hmm. And so it was my introduction to San Antonio, and I'm, I start doing this business, and so all these things start happening. Um, our daughters, we have piggy banks, little piggy, uh, piggy banks for them. Piggy banks. And so... Um, You know, when you, I'm sure you can relate at some point in your life, when you're tied with money, 
you can, you know, you start cutting on things that the good things are, have to go. So we, I had to tell the girls right now, there's things that we won't be able to do. Um, right now, this is not a good idea to spend on. And so my daughter started putting every time they found a penny or a quarter, they would put it in their piggy bank. And they kept on telling us that, don't worry, mommy, I have money in my piggy bank and it's hidden from so-and-so's guys under the bed. <laughs> oh, that's and cute. so these guys pretty much became for my daughters and the idea of, of, for the girls at that time was, um, they're, they're, those two people are crooks and we have to be careful because there's crooks in the world. That was a good lesson to learn so early on in life. Yeah. 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 So, you so, you know, so your daughter's going to have to learn yeah. it. Um, yes. So we're sitting there out, you know, a shitload of money, defrauded out of this investment. And in our garage sits 4,400 pounds of green coffee. And, you know, we just, we had to make a decision. Do we just dump this thing in a river somewhere. I I wasn't going to do that. I I, I was. was. Yeah, that was, was, to me, that was, I'm just going to load this up in the truck and I'm just going to do it. But, you know, eventually she, and she was persistent and she had to be, uh, but eventually, you know, she said, look, you know, throughout the eight or nine months, it took me to get this coffee here and to, you know, get in this position and in working with these guys, I learned how to import coffee. I've figured out the system. I've made the connections. And I know how to make cold brew. I know how to make cold brew better than these guys. Yes, I had my own recipe. And I, I thank God they would always go around and I always acted pretty coy with them as of, uh, I'm in this situation because I'm investing in you guys. Right. Right. Because I wasn't going to, you know, what if... You know, at the end of the day, what if their recipe was better than mine? I wasn't there to compete or anybody. Right. They had a product that I was interested in pushing into the market. And so, yeah, I, I just didn't think, you know, I'm a Latina. And so <laughs> I, I, in if, case if, you if, haven't noticed. Yes, and yeah. so I have, if, you know, the world gives me coffee, green coffee beans, I'm going to fucking make coffee. coffee. And I started making coffee. You and made, and, yes. Yeah, and you I, made lemonade it, out of lemons. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's, 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 that's right. Dope. That's right. I wasn't going to let it. And I wanted, my daughters were scared. I wasn't going to let my daughters see me defeated. I didn't right. want to have that story in my daughter's mind that, my, oh my God, we used to have a coffee business, but then some guys came and destroyed it. And that was the end of it. No, right. I want my daughters to remember that my mom went to every single, with them in the car, every single coffee shop trying to sell my coffee. I want my daughters to remember how hard it was to make cold brew uh, on the weekends because we I was making the cold brew, I was doing the exporting. I mean, Claire was giving me giving me a lot of supporting man in the manpower, uh, helping me go here and there, but I was the only one with the information of how to get the coffee, who to send it with, um, where, where do I sell it to, how do we move it around, and, and it's not that I knew it, knew it, but I was the only one that was available to learn. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when, and but I wouldn't have been able to do it without Clint. When did y'all like make it? Like, what was that next step? What well, it, like this, this whole business has just been a series of like, okay, we'll do this. No, this isn't working. We'll do this. No, right. no, no, this isn't yeah. working. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not being like, that's sounds right. like life. That's yeah. right. It's exhausting. It's a trial and error system. And, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it's, Future's got an album where he's like, just, just never quit, never stop. You know, right. just keep going, just keep going, because eventually, you'll do it. If you just never stop, you'll make it. Yeah. And so, you know, the first step was, well, we got all this green coffee. There's all these coffee roasters in San Antonio. We'll sell them, we'll sell them roasted coffee. Uh-huh. And then we realized, oh, no, it's a it boys' was, it club, was, yes. and she's not a boy, and she's not part of the club. <laughs> and so she got frozen you experienced out. Experienced that? Yeah. I mean, yes. oh, oh, just, oh just straight up, you know. Uh sexism and what I thought, you know, going into oh it, God. well, what more progressive of an industry right. can you get than a coffee? Yeah. I mean, you know, look, we've got this oh, Colombian coffee yes. here, we're in a shit in town. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm thinking, oh man, it's just going to be love and hugs and you millennials are just going to love each other. No, it wasn't like that at all and everybody hated her. And so, <laughs> you're like, I, I it. And Thank so, you, you know, eventually you she then has to yeah. sell, you know, so she sells me on, let's not dump this in the river, which was a big <laughs> big hurdle to then she's <laughs> got to sell me on the fact that what we kind of need to do is just buy a, a place and then I need to buy a gigantic roaster and so that took a while to get me over that hurdle because yeah you know I I am I was much more conservative in my thought of this business of I was just of the opinion let's just try to get some of the money back 
and then we can call it. She, she's That's the right. one that had the vision. You know, mm-hmm. she's the one that said, you know, I, I see something out of this. I, I, I see the diamonds in this mound of shit that, you know, we can pick through mm-hmm. and we can, we can make this work. And, you know, she had to really, you know, just convince me day in, day out of this is going to work. And I, that's I, what I, she but, did. But I did. And, I, and it wasn't just because, you know, I... Obviously, at the beginning, it was the, the feeling of I will not be defeated. I will come out somehow victorious because I had left my family in a terrible position. Yeah. I felt very, you know, I know that the guys, uh, you know, over after, after we got into all the disputes, we found out that these guys were con artists. And so we were con. And, but still, the responsibility of having done this to my family, of having them go through the trouble of being in, in a way feeling like we didn't have enough you know that was horrible and so I just had to at night I would just spend every night thinking okay I'm gonna how am I gonna make this how who am I gonna who do I need to meet now that is gonna get me to the next person and I started meeting people here in San Antonio and you know because even though that horrible thing happened we're not all bad no <laughs> and, and that was my thing that I knew that when all these crazy things started happening um, people were helping me out some people were buying the equipment um, we were able to recover some of the equipment and um, some people were buying it from me at a very good price just to help me out. Other people were supporting me on the idea of selling coffee, especially women, Mm -hmm. because the whole thing of the coffee was, let's bring, uh, if I'm going to buy coffee from my country, I'm going to help my people and who needs more help in Colombia and in the world right now if it's not women. And so I just felt like let's just concentrate on helping girls, women in Colombia, and let's move that forward. And so the whole story was always like that. You guys are going to make my cold brew with my coffee that comes from female farms. So I was always faithful to that idea, to the being able to help Colombian women in Colombia, mm-hmm. uh, coffee growers. And so, well, um, that's pretty much how I started telling people my story. And I had pictures. Like, I have the picture of me going to the coffee farm. I have a picture of us taking the girls. I have a picture of coffee beans. I have a picture of picking the beans. Because it's not a, it's not a pretty story. Mm-hmm. It, is, yeah. it is reality. It's grind, right? It is the, the actual going to Colombia, bringing my, my non Spanish speaking husband <laughs> to uh, yeah, to that's that's a little judgmental, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on, you get a Don't just sign on Biblioteca. I should have picked up something. Yeah, exactly. He had to. Uh, I know all the cuss words. <laughs> I thought you were doing first. I just screamed, screamed at you many a time. But Patricia, let, yeah. me, let me ask you this. So, you know, bringing the Colombian culture to Texas, you know, via coffee. You know, and did you have concerns because, you know, this is Texas. People like the way, like their way, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any concerns trying to, you know, bring something to... Yes, obviously, um, like my husband was telling me, you know, you're going to find rocks in the, in the, on the way. And my, my rock, you know, it was steps. Different problems come at different times. And mm-hmm. one of the next problem, problems was that I was a competitor roaster in a little world of male roasters that kind of don't like each other, but they work kind of together. Mm-hmm. And they have their own little boy club. And so that was super difficult that was so, um, and it was uh, still sometimes we have issues here and there. And so being able to push a, a drink that there was not enough because, oh, I'm bringing coffee from Ethiopia. Um, so your coffee is not going to sell here because nobody, everybody can get uh, Colombian coffee at the grocery store. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it was also telling the story of the women who are growing this coffee and why my coffee was different. So, yes, there is a... I, those were really hard times. Um, the clo- you know, people closing the doors on you because you're not part of the boy club, or those people shutting you down and having people talk about you and your product is terrible. But it makes you better. It totally makes you better, especially right now, nowadays with social media. People talk about you one second and they forget about you. And so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? Yeah, just keep going. Just, just keep going and try to do your best for, and, and represent and, the, and empower the people that you're doing this for. That's all that matters. And that's, you know, at the beginning, I knew that I was going to have a hard time convincing my husband on doing this because of a monetary reason. But my husband, but Clean got in, fell in love with the story because he saw it. And uh, it became, I see. it became 
So yes. you have a store now. Let's let's um, let's move us and fast forward it a little bit, just in the interest of time as well, and talk about where you're at today through all that struggle mm-hmm. that y'all have gone through. Now, though, you're been, you're reaping some of those benefits, right? Yes. So what what do y'all have today? What's going on? Right now. So we have a store on the south side of San Antonio. It's, a, it's in the, yeah, I know, the Lone Star District. And so it's the, <laughs> it's the creatives district, I think, because we have a lot of, you know, a beautiful community of uh, people who like to do things art and craft. Like mm-hmm. it's a new crafts area. And so I'm not the only one who's there who's bringing new ideas, but I love that area of town. The roaster, um, I was able to finally invite people over mm-hmm. and do a roast with them and talk about the farm and the family whose coffee belongs this to. And, and the story behind the coffee and the aromas and flavors of this beautiful... It's an experience. Just exactly. And so when you come in, you see that this is a very welcoming place. It's a place where you're just community. A place where you can... You don't have to roast you don't have to have you know you don't have to come and roast your coffee but if you're there and you were roasting come over I'll tell you about the coffee let's talk about your experiences with coffee and let's turn this into a you know an experience that is unforgettable to you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a moment where you're just sharing yourself with me or the place in itself and you're just thinking oh my god I love this place and I want to come back yeah, I it's just phenomenal. Wanna, I'm going to take a right turn, but before I, on the conversation, before I do, I just want to say what y'all have sounds amazing. Oh, thank and you. And I, I've, it feels like you almost have the, the, the model of beer companies, how they do kind of a community brewing yep. and what have yes. you. I've never yes. seen that for uh, coffee. Yes. I think we're much more similar to like a local distillery or local brewer, beer brewer than we are to your average coffee roaster. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I encourage yeah. everyone to check out Coffee Coffee Shinado and that model and what they do, because they're doing something that's not being done, even in Austin, but yeah. we're all yeah. here and think we're yeah. all cool. We, we, we don't have that. We, hope, we, don't to, have we that. hope to bring that model to Austin, <laughs> hopefully in the near future. Yes. Try to bring that the I'm from France, and French people are very particular about their coffee. <laughs> yeah. 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 Try to get that boys club. Uh, it, it, it's really tight and, yeah. and no way to share in their secrets. Yeah. No. There's no way. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't, I don't, see I, I'm from, I'm the people of the coffee. We love coffee. We love sitting with people and chatting with people. Let's have a conversation. Let's right. be friends. In fact, that's our motto. Colombia has a really sweet motto of let's have a coffee and let's be friends. Mm-hmm. And so we live it every day. And so for me, coming from that, where you go to different homes and, oh, let me show you my new roast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got that good, good, yes, man. That's that's right. Right. I got that good, good You're roast. This shit right here? here? Yes. <laughs> right yes, here? Yes, exactly. And it's, you know, people, <laughs> FID is like, how? For how long did you roast it? What mm. temperature? And so people just sharing those experiences and and then coming here, where it's like, uh, 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 you ain't seen my shit. I'm like, what, what I mean, don't don't look at it. Just don't look at it. Yeah. It's not and, you, and making you feel like you're like special to do something that it should be for everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, learning how to roast coffee is a wonderful experience. It's also knowledge. Knowledge should not be kept from everybody. Mm -hmm. If you choose just to drink a cup of coffee, then great. But if you want to know how your coffee is roasted and every temperature because you want to know because for shits and giggles, yeah. and you should be able to have that yeah. information, just how it is in the rest of the food. And, and one of the secrets to our business model is we've brought over a coffee roaster that's unlike anything they've got here in, um, in San Antonio or in Texas for that matter. It's an air, there's two things that make it special. First of all, it's an air roaster. So it's not your typical drum roaster that kind of just burns coffee with a fire at the bottom. It's mm-hmm. more of an indirect heat. So think of the difference between like grilling a steak and roasting ribs, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. And so uh, there's in the coffee in our uh, roaster never hits metal. So it never becomes carcinogenic, it never mm. burns. It's That's just in like a popcorn, and the, zero gravity the, state, yes, getting hot air at all times. It's a times. really good example of yeah. what it looks the, like. The second, the second thing that makes it unique is we've got this software system that once you learn your curve, which is the combination of time and, and heat that makes your roast, once you figure out what you want your curve to be, you can plug it in on this roaster and just press play. And it goes. And so anyone can learn to roast. I'm really like, good at pressing play. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so much. So it's like if you can operate an iPod, you can do this. And so, you know, if you take, you know, two or three short lessons with Patricia, you can learn to roast coffee just as good as anyone else. And so we're taking the mystique and kind of the, 
I've been doing this for 75 years, and therefore I know now how to roast a cup of coffee. No, Mm -hmm. come over for two weeks, and we can teach how to roast. Yeah, exactly. Bring it to the people. And so, you know, that's that's kind of what the, uh, again, just building our business model out of it, of, you know, making it more accessible, making it less kind of exclusive, more, you know, like she said, come over and have a cup of coffee. So I'm going to make that right to the conversation. I'm going to throw something out there that... um, that's brought up a couple times is conversation and coffee. And, you know, one of the things I do sometimes is I, I drink alcohol. I don't know if y'all knew that. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> why, why are you looking at me? Yes. I'm what familiar you, with the term. Familiar. Yes. No. So what do you, when it comes to conversations over a drink, do you think there's a different conversation that happens over a coffee versus what happens over a cocktail? Yes. Can really? You, can you unpack that? What yes. do you think? When uh, when you're having when you're having uh, alcohol, well, you know, if you drink um, alcohol at any time of the day, it's not, it doesn't matter. But when you're together in a social setting, you're actually drinking you know, to ease up, mm-hmm. right? And that's you know to to relax. And the whole mentality that we have behind alcohol is that we relax because we will do things that we're not really used to doing. With right. coffee, Lucent exactly. And so, but with coffee, it's different because when you have a cup of coffee, you yourself are just, um, it, it, for most people, there are thoughts behind every single cup of coffee that they have. Like the ritual in the morning when you're having your coffee, you have, you're thinking about the things that you're doing, um, or you're thinking about your work, or, or you, you do something that is the same because you drink your coffee every single day. Mm. And so the thoughts that you have during, while drinking coffee are very self-aware at the moment. So when you're having when you're yeah. having coffee with with someone, I sit on the other side of the bar and I start talking to people about the type of coffee that we have, and so we start creating this rapport. But in your brain, you're still very self-aware. So it will be very easy for me to just say if I wanted to, like, let's just say, so yeah, you know, did you hear about um, the prices of gasoline? You'll immediately bring me. In your mind, you're telling you, oh, my God, I'm going to have to buy my car is empty, blah, oh, blah, blah. Yeah. So you will start talking about right. it. You create that kind of closeness. And so will, people will tell you things that they normally wouldn't, especially if they were drinking. It's a more intimate type of yeah. situation. Or, yeah. Yes. Did you is. have a ritual at home? Um, like I, have a, I have a ritual at, at work. At work? Yes. And, to- and yes, of course. So I have in the morning. I have a cold brew, and um, I have a cold brew, cold brew with CBD. Uh-huh. And I um, and I immediately get on my phone, and I start looking at all my 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 social media, my Instagram, and I I start making a list of the things that I want to do to make the day better on the following posts that I have. Because that's my most pressing thing. And that is my ritual. In the back of my mind, I also know that I'm going to have to pay the water, the electricity. (laughs) I have to buy milk. But that is my ritual that I do when I have my cup of coffee. I do that. What is your ritual? Mm, I go to work. (laughs) (laughs) I am at work when I'm doing that. No, I mean, I I don't really have a morning ritual or anything. I just kind of go to work and do that. Yeah. And then whatever else needs to be done. What else? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in one more thing before we yeah, get yeah. we're gonna play a little game after this. <laughs> I'm, gonna throw, I'm gonna do a little little piece before the game to get us warmed up for it. So awesome. Uh, what was everyone's at the table? What was your first cup of coffee? Ah uh, yeah. We're getting close to the end, so keep it somewhat brief. Yes. I mean, I had to go, go first. first. Yeah, yeah go I don't first. mind. I mean, my parents. It's probably the most recent for you. N- excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> my parents oh, are huge man. coffee drinkers, but what the the funny thing about it is that I've always drank instant coffee. Like, mm. I think the first time I went to Coffee Shinado was the first time I tried amazing coffee and became a coffee snob after that. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. Yeah. I'm glad I spoiled you for you life. Did. <laughs> you did. So, and my boyfriend as well. But yes. yeah, my first cup of coffee, I was really young. Like it was, my mom and dad would make it for themselves in the morning and, and then, you know, around like seven or eight, I wanted one too. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> my, uh, my first cup of coffee, I was 19. Um, not a coffee drinker, admittedly, so... Uh, my mom at the time, she would um, work for the San Antonio Express News um, in the newspaper department, kind of uh, putting papers together for you know, deliveries. And so she would work like early hours and, and things like that. So whenever I was in town from college, I would go party. And then 
after I would get done at the club, I would stop by the newspaper place <laughs> and, and help her, you know, put the papers together and do oh, awesome. things like that. And they had a coffee machine there, and everyone else was drinking coffee. So I was like, you know what? Let me just try this out. Another here. monkey see monkey do. How did that? What did it taste like? Do you still remember kind of what it tasted like the first time that you had it? Um, I thought it was interesting the first time. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time, I, I didn't quite like it. Mainly because it was hot, and I'm yes. the type that's, oh, if it's something good, I just want to take a big gulp of it. Yeah. And so the whole mindset of like, enjoying the coffee, mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Good answer. It was kind of like, oh, it's something to drink, you know? So it wasn't until later that I started to understand that. You know, now, look at a pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you got fancy. Fancy. I'll yeah. throw mine out there. It's two parts of probably some experience to Byron. Um, I did it in college. I used it as a drug. And uh, it was, <laughs> I needed to stay up for a test or study for something. And I would just down coffee. I'd chug it. And I hated the taste. Because it was Insta-coffee or it was some cheap yes. coffee. Mm -hmm. And I was just drinking it for the drug. I didn't actually really get my first good cup of coffee to enjoy until I was probably in my mid-twenties. I went to Halcyon, which I believe I'll have one here. Yes, there's yeah. one in Austin. And I was just late, and I was up talking to a, a friend of mine, and we're going to be there for a while. Yeah, I'll get a coffee. Oh, my God, this is good. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I'm going to be this. This is dangerously good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just take one. It was, it was a latte something or some, yes. some sort. I, being lactose intolerant, I had to be mindful about that as well. So I like a little milk in the coffee, and it's got to be some crazy, snobbish version of it. But I enjoy it. <laughs> and so now, I still don't drink coffee. I don't have a routine for coffee, but when I need it, I'm up really late or need to be up early. I have my things that I get, my places that I go. I have my routines. And you? So uh, my dad always drank, he would get like hot chocolate with a little bit of coffee in it. Uh -huh. like, uh, and I would be like, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty dope. So I get like a Nesquik. Yes. And then put just a little bit of Nescafe. I don't know if you... Whatever. Yes. And then it's really when I started working right after college, I was like, yeah, you, you get to work, you go to the coffee room, then you make coffee and you try some. I tried that for a week. It was <laughs> shitty coffee. But it made me... I was like this on my computer. I was jittery. I couldn't yes. type right. I'm like, this is, this is not for me. <laughs> but then years later, my brother was like, you got to try this smoker thing. Yeah, which is what I was going to tell you. You've yeah, been drinking so mocha, mocha can do it. your entire Mo life. Yes. <laughs> mocha, white mocha, ice mocha. I can do all that. But like a straight coffee, like I get, I start to, to tense up. So Interesting. Yeah. That is awesome. Do you remember? Um, for me, when I did it, I was little. And so <laughs> I, I was little and it was like... Um, like a medicine, someone was giving it to me. It was really sweet, and it was the leftover of it, so it wasn't hot. And I still remember the aunt who gave it to me and what she was wearing. I mean, maybe, I mean, to Burning me, it memory. was like, it was like, what is this? With all this sugar, because all I was tasting was the sugar. Yeah. And then when I tried it for this, the real time, I was like, these things taste like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but one day I will make money off no, it. I had no idea. No. I didn't know, um, you know, the economic part of the business. We have been very successful, successful in a very um, uh, short amount of time. But the best thing for it is that we're helping so many people and that we are living, you know, that we're help, having experiences with people, whether they're drinking our coffee, they're, um, they're buying it online, or they're co coming to the roaster. And so being part of someone's memory is pretty intense. Let's go. It's honorable. It's cool. Yes. All right, you got to top that, man. Uh, so <laughs> when I was when I was growing up in my parents' house, we had certain cups that were designated for Coke because we always drank Coke and Dr Pepper at my house. They still and, do, and they still do. <laughs> and uh, so my grandparents were staying with us one weekend, and I go into the kitchen, and there's just a big glass of Coca Cola sitting there, and I'm like, ah, just for me. And so I go up to it, and I take the swig and I then realized real quickly that my grandfather <laughs> like six hours ago had poured a cup of coffee into the Coca-Cola cup and I was chugging cold coffee Ooh. at like seven years old and so I spit it out everywhere and I was like this is the worst thing I've ever had you know I swore up and down right then I'd never start a coffee company and, uh, <laughs> I knew it and, uh, and, and, and lo and behold I betrayed my own oath you know <laughs> No, it, it was awful the first time I drank it. And then I don't think I had another cup until we started 
dating or might have been married, and she wow. introduced me to Espresso. Colombia, man. I Columbia, Columbia, man. Is, is where it's there were certain Columbia things women. I was going to have to do being married to a Colombian that, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you fly in small biplanes, you, uh, you know. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. Really? nothing. You got you to stay below the radar. That's right. Um, so, no, I mean, you know, then now I, I drink coffee known mostly, if not all, because I ended up with her. Cool. Thank you. Good choice. Nice. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap things up. So we're going to play a little game of word association. All right. We can go one at a time. Uh, can we be dirty? Huh? Would it be dirty? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can change those words. These are actually pretty easy. But it can be. Uh, so first thing that comes to mind, uh, we're going to start with you. Uh, Game of Thrones. Daenerys? All right. Game of Thrones? No, no I got another no. one for you. Do we, you best tacos. Do best tacos. Las Palapas. Ooh. Okay. I got to try that okay. then. Really? Is that like a big thing here? I mean, Las Palapas, it's like, the, it's like a, it's like it's like a it's upgraded taco cabana. It's a cultural thing. I grew up here. And oh, so my oh, late gotcha. nights as a teenager were spent at 2.30 a.m. in a Las Palapas eating chorizo and egg, eating fajitas. And I mean, you know, I could go to Las Palapas today mm-hmm. and I'm right back there with Jimmy Smith, Brandon Turnage, and Chad Aww. Cage, you know, so I, it's, yeah. All right, all right, that's just, I got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. Shut it down. Shut it down. that one. Uh, Trump. Patricia. Races. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> Netflix. Sex. <laughs> just chill. What? Just chill. <laughs> yes. Oh, 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 Good combo. Oh, wow. You know what? Same thing. That's the same thing. Yeah. That, that's, that right there is the difference between us. We say the same thing, yet she's like, sex. You're like, like a censored chill. version. Are you, are you an illegal partner or something? Yes, like, my husband, that's yes. Why. The, the, yeah. way I, the way I say it is, you know, I'm the chips, she's the salsa. And he's so, also my know. art attorney, oh, so gotcha. yeah, we, I don't I get to that. go around I did that. Okay, last right, word. Last so, word it's least. the hardest. Spurs. Sex. <laughs> After hey, how, how do the Spurs... I'm always yeah, well, no. <laughs> Spurs. She wears them in bed. I mean, five, right? You know, that's how many five titles, rings, right? Yeah. Five rings. Yeah. I mean, you know, just growing up here, you know, there we're a one horse town, and I mean, yeah. you know, from the Sean Elliott, David Robinson days to the Tim Duncan and the Big Three. Tony I mean, Bacca. you know, just Tony yeah, Bacca. we lived a charm life for a lot of years, and so yeah. now I'm, they're uh, Spurs. Awesome, 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 awesome. Dig Great. That. Well, we're going to wrap things up. Well, before we do, I want you know, to thank you, first of all. Thank no, you. No, thank Where you can people find you? Where people find your, uh, all right. your coffee, so you social media, it. all that good stuff? Coficionado.coffee is our uh, website. And if you want to come visit us at our brick and mortar, we're at 502 West Mitchell, San Antonio, Texas. 78204. And you can find us in Instagram, Instagram as Coficionado, Coficionado Life. Yep. And um, thank you. We look forward to seeing everybody. We look forward to, you know, just becoming more and more a part of the cultural scene here in San Antonio. And Congratulations. Yeah. All the thank success. You. Thank you. You know, yes. all the grind. What is, what great is, story. What is our, our, our motto? Born in Colombia, raised in Texas. Yes, All sir. right. Thank you There's so much a shirt. Guys. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> there will be shirts. There will be shirts. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was thank so much. you guys.